gonna vlog everything. Um, one thing that people don't talk about often, and you see it really more so in the surgery pages group. Um, first of all, I lost sensation in my arm, so I have nerve damage. So I, I don't have any sensation in these two fingers. It's like tingling, I should say. So that should come back in a couple months when my nerves regenerate. If it comes back, if not, then that's what it is. But all here is like mad painful. But moving forward, with that being said, I knew that was a side effect to getting the BBL done and lipo done. I think what people often don't talk about is the emotional journey of this process. And when I say the emotional journey, like, it's a lot. It's a lot, especially for a person like me who's independent. I don't like waiting on people to do anything. I do everything by myself for the most part, and I will get it done. Um, I will be, this week will make me two weeks post-op. So I had surgery July 27th. Um, Tuesday will make me literally 14 days post-op. And the hardest part, I actually drove today for the first time. Let me just say that. And that was kind of tough, especially every bump you go over, you feel everything. I felt like I was sitting on my BBL pillow incorrectly. So we'll see how that looks because you don't want to put any pressure on your butt. I got my pineapple tea. Um, but moving forward, the emotional journey of this thing is crazy because one minute you're like, oh my God, I'm in love with my results. And then the next minute you're like, oh my God, I want a round two. And even though I said I wouldn't do a round two, right now I'm in the phase of I want a round two. Um, and it's, it's off of the strength of my swelling has gone down. When you first see your body, you're seeing your body with the swelling. So you're gonna see everything is gonna look like voluptuous. The swelling goes down, you lose volume. And then if the fluff fairy visits you, which is like a phase where your body just fills out, which is about the six to eight week mark, everything will like fill out. And then you'll see your kind of almost, your butt will like fill out and you know, your new home for your fat cells now like expanded to the new, how can I say it? your butt is not accustomed to having that that weight back there or that that stretch. That's the word I'm looking for, that stretch. So now your skin is adjusted. So now it's like, okay, we're here. And like to clarify, like the main reason why I had surgery, everybody knows that I had a body. It's not like I didn't have a body. I had ass, I had hips, I had I had a decent sized waist, but I wanted a smaller waist, wider hips, and a little bit more projection in my butt because how my butt was shaped. It had its its volume, but I wanted more volume under here and I wanted more volume in the top, which he's seen what I was talking about. And, you know, he was just like, you know, you really don't have much fat, but, you know, we'll get fat from somewhere. Moving forward, you go through these phases with surgery and it's just like pregnancy blues for the most part. In a way, but... You literally, one day you're like, why the hell did I do this? Then the next day you're like, oh my God, I love my results. Then the next day is like, bro, where's the ass at? Because that swelling, like I mentioned, goes down. So now it's just, you're just at that phase where you're just like, I spent all this money for what? And I do not regret my decision. Honestly, if I was to have a baby in the next two, three years. And like, most people snap back after their kids. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you end up needing a tummy tuck after. Sometimes it's easier for you to get your stomach back to where it was, you know, before you got pregnant. Your hips sometimes spread out. People say all their weight went to their ass. I don't mind it. Um, if I was to have a kid and after, if I don't snap back within three months, four months, I would definitely go for a round two. Honestly, I would. I, I'm not even going to hold you. I'm not. And I feel like a lot of people get surgery and they're not honest and... I said this already, I from the time I started my YouTube, I said I was coming here being honest. That means the the facade of putting makeup on and beating my face 24-7 and looking a certain type of way, and I don't got time for that. I'm here to give y'all the real deal. I'm two weeks post-op. I'm going through the emotional roller coaster. If I'm tired of sleeping on my stomach, I'm tired of being in this damn faha. It's annoying. I don't care what nobody tells me of you know what you signed up for. Yes, you know what you signed up for. At the end of the day, you are human. You're bound to feel some type of emotion to certain things so 
this is the most annoying part for me and it's the being stiff sometimes i haven't had a massage in like two to three days so i'm struggling right now i probably won't have a massage until like monday or tuesday so i've been trying to like do my own little self massage and stuff with the little rollers but still like me touching myself it, it hurts <laughs> those massages to me don't get any easier and i feel like i go with, excuse me i go into the massage excited because i know when i come out excuse me sorry i'm gonna feel so much better but i come out being angry because i'm in so much pain like while i'm getting it because it hurts and you know there are times where i cry and there are times that i don't cry and it's like bro this thing really really hurts like it, i don't care how much tylenol you pop how much percocets you pop how much cbd gummies you pop in my opinion it hurts and i have a high tolerance for pain like i keep telling everybody i will do that surgery over just to say doll or future dolls that plan on having surgery make sure that you have an amazing support system that um understands and gets it that this is an emotional journey it's not just oh she got her body done and she's fine it's not because even with the little tasks that you're accustomed to doing if you don't have help it is hard because you're not supposed to be bending you're not supposed to be lifting you're not supposed to be doing this and to be honest i've done all of that because i'm just like i'm not gonna sit here and be codependent on everybody and anything and maybe that that is the the contribution to a, like my skin softening up in certain places because i've been i've been moving um like right now i'm talking to you and i'm getting winded like and i know it's because i have the fire on i have the the foams on and it's like pressing against my side and i'm starting to feel hot the other thing that i nobody really mentioned and i don't know if this is a thing or people probably just don't realize it is the fluctuation of your body temperature i feel like one minute i'm like super warm that I need to have like the AC on and then another minute I'm like oh my god I'm hot right now I'm hot but yet my skin is is in goosebumps so that's the other thing because once again your body has just gone through trauma so it's regulating itself it's trying to get back to normal you're all over the place any little stress can you know put you all over the place but say this to say the least trust the process I'm trying to remain positive I'm appreciative for you know having the people that I have around me that remind me every day. If you haven't found a surgery sister, make sure that you find a surgery sister or a surgery sisters because you definitely lean on each other. Like my surgery sisters are going through the same thing and we've been trying to keep each other positive. Um, walk as much as possible, hydrate as much as possible, drink your pineapple tea and your Annika tea and just enjoy the ride. Like y'all see me here struggling to definitely watch your salt intake i've noticed that even with eating i can't eat too much like i've noticed i've eaten in small portions because the swelling is uncomfortable you feel the swelling when you eat like you know when you get full your stomach is gonna project so just feeling that that's a little bit annoying um the salt is for real i had chinese food the other night and i was in as we call it swell hell like literally i was so over it um What's another thing? I'm trying to figure out what other advice I got for y'all, bro. Uh, sleeping has been a challenge. I have a zero gravity chair. I just have not put it together yet. I'm going to try to put it together either tomorrow or tonight. Um, and see if my mom can take it out the garage for me or something. Um, the other sucky part is I run a business. And I've had orders. And I feel so bad because... I forgot to put on my website that I was out of the shop. And of course, get used to the face down ass up position, honey, because this ain't no joke. Like right now I'm sitting on my knees. Um, but get used to the face down ass up position or get used to being on your knees a lot because that is your new home for the next six to eight weeks. If you choose to be a daredevil and sit before, um, like I decided to drive earlier because I, I needed to feel it but and I drove for I sat for an hour and 30 something minutes driving so trust the process trust the process I know it's rough I know it's tough I know it's stressful but just trust it and enjoy the ride you did it for a reason and it's gonna pay off as I always say you are your biggest investment you didn't spend Five thousand to thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars for nothing. So enjoy it, girls.